This engine has to be rebuilt. And I'm working on this engine that needs new parts. And I have a brand new project over here that needs an engine rebuild as well. Before I reveal a brand new project to you guys, I'll focus on this Renault Le car that also needs some engine work. The last time I featured this car right behind me here was outside. I pulled it out of the barn and gave you guys an introduction video. If you guys haven't seen that video yet, click the link up above. Right after that, I went to work on the interior of this car. I vacuumed everything. I cleaned everything off with soapy water and I wiped everything down. And right now it actually looks pretty decent. The next thing I had to focus on was the engine bay and that was just filled with years of debris. There were acorns stuffed inside the cylinders. So I vacuumed up everything as best as I could. And there were a bunch of wires and loose components in there. So whatever was loose or almost loose I just removed that to give you guys a better overview in today's video once I was done cleaning up this car I was able to roll into the shop now I'm gonna remove the hood share with you guys once more this engine bay after the cleanup and then I'll dig right into the disassembly process of this drivetrain now you guys can finally identify this engine a little bit better I was able to laser clean the surface of this engine everything around the engine that was loose was removed and placed on the ground like an alternator wires or even miscellaneous hoses over here we have the transmission and the engine it will be dropped down and the car itself will be lifted up so i can actually pull the drivetrain out and underneath of this car i'm not exactly sure how many components are in the way to remove this drivetrain out of the car but we'll find out in just a second With the radiator out of the way, I can now access the transmission mount, which is right down below. But there are still some wires in the way that I have to remove, like the positive lead that goes all the way to the starter and the negative lead that goes to the transmission. Another thing I want to remove on this engine are all the components that are higher than the engine block, like the dipstick tube and the distributor right behind it. I got this car up on jack stands. The next thing I have to do is to go underneath, remove a cover, and that will reveal more of the transmission. There is a linkage and maybe some other miscellaneous components that I have to remove on the underside. Right after that, I will remove both wheels and CV axles going to the front end. So let's dig right into it. Earlier in this video, I mentioned I dropped the drivetrain and slide it out underneath of the car. I think I'm going to change up my game plan to remove this drivetrain and I'll tell you exactly why. We're going to go underneath of the car and over here I have two jack stands that are right underneath two frame rails. So this right here is a frame rail that runs all the way to the back of the car and over there is another frame rail that's supported by a jack stand. This right here is just an oil pan to catch some of the oil that came out of the transmission. But right now, since these frame rails are very narrow together, as you can see, they're very narrow and the drivetrain on the engine side of things is a little bit wider. Um, I cannot pull these jack stands any further out. I do have an engine hoist, but I don't think there's enough room that I can make uh, to actually drop the engine down and slide it out. To be able to lift this drivetrain up and out of the car, there is still one more component in the way. And that is this part right here, the steering rack. It goes from left to right and it hooks up to the wheels. But also over here, we have our steering shaft that goes to the steering wheel, but also comes in here because we have a pinion gear. So this assembly will have to be removed in order for me to lift up the transmission and the engine as one unit. So I'll remove that steering rack and right after that, I'll grab the engine hoist and remove this drivetrain. Fingers crossed, everything goes as planned.
I managed to pull the drivetrain out of the Renault R5 and it's over here hanging on the engine hoist. So let's have a look at it. This right here is the drivetrain of the Renault R5. Towards the front of the car, we have a four-speed manual transmission that only powers the front wheels. The front CV axles get inserted into the transmission in this area and that's why I blocked it off because oil was coming out of it. Behind the transmission, you will find our clutch area that's housed in this area. Right behind the clutch, we also have our inline four-cylinder engine powered by gasoline. As you probably noticed in the first video, the cylinder head was already gone and the previous owner already took that off. So I had nothing to do with this, but I did clean it up a little bit. There is still organic matter down in here. As you can see, there is still a little bit right down there. And I bet you this is still uh, stuffed down in here. Uh, but nevertheless, this engine will be torn apart and I will probably look into the transmission as well. Another thing I noticed, the oil pan was already removed by the previous owner as well. So I'll give you guys a look underneath of this engine. As you guys can see, uh, it was open, exposed to the elements, and there's just spider webs basically everywhere. And it's very filthy and it's already starting to rust as well. So this right here is your crankshaft. Um, these right here are your main bearings. And then these little bearings right here, or these little parts right here are your connecting rods. It's probably not as bad as it looks like. I will go through that engine and I will share with you guys the full process. So I will be disassembling everything and I will be sharing with you guys the assembly process on this engine. Besides the engine rebuild, I also wanna have a good look at this four speed manual transmission. I haven't shared a disassembly process or an assembly process on a transmission just yet. So that will be new for you guys at home. And it also will be new for me because I haven't really worked on transmissions yet. So I think I can learn a lot, but also share a lot with you guys at home. As you guys can probably notice, the engine needs a lot of work. The transmission needs work. Within the engine bay, I have to sort out some of the wiring and there are miscellaneous components that just have to be refurbished. If that's something you're interested in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications because then you will be one of the first to see my upcoming videos. If you guys enjoyed this video today, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It gives me feedback if I'm doing a good job, but it also boosts these videos for others to see as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video. Peace.